Joining us, I'm Jill Brown here in the Weather Channel Forecast Center, joined with John Hope, our hurricane specialist, and we've been tracking powerful Hurricane Opal. Now, we've seen it do some dramatic things today, come up to a strong Category 4. It's weakened enough now, and this, John, this can make the difference with somebody who's evacuated coming back and finding their home being there with it being a little bit weaker hurricane than if it had come in at that 150 mile per hour wind. But Jill, I'm afraid that out to the east of where the center of this hurricane is, that some of those, uh, there's some very strong winds indeed. In fact, reconnaissance aircraft reported winds of over 100 miles an hour extending out pretty far to the east of the circulation. And we just had a report here from Herbert uh, Air Force Base that the wind has gusted to 144 miles an hour. Seems almost incredible. We haven't seen any other winds on land anywhere near that strong. And Herbert is about 30 miles east of Pensacola. It's well east of Pensacola, but out to the east of where the center is is where the very strong winds are, and those winds are onshore, and this is where the high storm surge is going to be also. All right, let's take a look at the satellite picture here, and we can see as we put this into motion, the darker red seems to have disappeared. This showed us that it was weakening a little bit. Apparently, maybe not as much as we had thought. Well, the center is just coming ashore. Well, I, I'm sure overall it's weakened, but that doesn't mean that in some of these rain bands there can't be some very high gusts because uh, once you've had a hurricane up to uh, 150 miles an hour, it takes it a while to wind down even as the pressure rises some. So I'm not too surprised to see some very strong gusty winds to the east of this center. I'm a little bit surprised to see it quite as strong as that. All right, we're going to find out now from Bill Keneally exactly what he's experiencing. He's been on the beach, Pensacola, earlier this morning. Now north of Pensacola, we're unable to get a live shot with him because of conditions, but we do have him on the phone. Bill, what are Hi, conditions Bill. there? Yes. Uh, things have not changed a whole lot here in the past hour. Our winds, by the way, are still pretty much out of the east-northeast, and it looks like that probably tells us this uh, eye where the actual center will be passing overhead over the next hour or two. Uh, it's a good thing we didn't go back east. We had booked a hotel room tonight in Fort Walton Beach, and as John said, 144 miles per hour in uh, Hurlburt, probably a little more than we'd like to deal with. But again, it's uh, very warm, very wet, and very windy. And it looks like that eye, or what is left of the eye wall, should be upon us shortly. Chill. Bill? Right, thank you. Can you hear Bill okay? No, I, no. I lost you now. Okay, we're on the other No, it looks like the eye wall is just, uh, just the north eye wall is just coming in on Pensacola. We have a new position now from the Hurricane Center at 6 p.m. They put the 30.2 and 87.2, and that is just south of Pensacola. So for all practical purposes, the purposes, the center of the eye of the hurricane is making landfall right now. Let's go ahead and take a look at the stats. Now this is the latest information that we have. We'll be updating this frame with the information you just gave us. Mm -hmm. But uh, some of the important things on here, winds 125 miles per hour. We've seen them gusting higher, so we might get some gusts that are higher than that. Pressure is 944 millibars, and that has come up a little bit in the last few hours. Yes, it has. Uh, earlier on this afternoon, it was 940, so it's up four millibars. So this is it now. It's not going to get any stronger. So whatever we have, uh, whatever strength this hurricane has, that is the strength it has as it makes landfall. All righty, and at this point, uh, next couple of hours will be critical. We'll see the strongest winds coming in across Pensacola and areas to the east, and this rain, of course. And very heavy rain. The rain's not about to end, and then there'll be some period of calm. It's a little bit difficult to tell how long that's going to be because the eye is not very well formed anymore at all. But after the period of relative calm, then the wind will shift to a westerly direction, probably southwest of Pensacola, and there'll be another batch of rain then will uh, last uh, for a while. Not, not too long, I think, because this is moving pretty fast. All right, let's take a look at that radar once again, and we'll uh, try and give you an idea of where Pensacola is on here, because it's kind of hard to see, but 
It's about right here, and you can see there's the eye wall coming right in. And our crew, of course, just to the north of that, and they're going to be getting that heavy rain and the strongest winds again in the next hour or so. Next, and then Next hour, and then begin to diminish a little bit after that. And that rain gel is incredibly heavy. It's just coming down in torrents. In the satellite picture, again, we haven't been able to see the eye for hours here. And actually, now the sun's beginning to set, so that's why it looks like it's kind of fading away. Mm -hmm. No, we're not going to be able to see the eye, but uh, I think we can see the circulation center just coming into Pensacola. And so uh, some very heavy rain associated with it for the next few hours, as you said. If we start getting wind gusts in other areas like this, 144 miles per hour, what kind of damage can folks expect? 144 miles an hour gusts would do a lot of damage. It doesn't take very long to uh, find any weaknesses in buildings and that sort of thing, blow down trees, certainly, and the trees in turn will blow down power lines. And again, we want to urge uh, folks, if they see some down power lines, don't drive over them because we don't know whether they're live or not. Right. At this point, it's just uh, stay put for the next few hours until it moves to the north. Stay put, stay in your house, uh, take a shelter in an inside room if the windows come out and so on. All right. With a Category 3 hurricane that we have now, now granted, it's not as strong as it was before, but we can still expect quite a bit of damage. Extensive damage with a Category uh, 3, what we say in the Stafford Simpson scale, if we have a uh, Category 1, such as Aaron was, minimal damage, but extensive damage with Category 3. So we don't really want to tell people not to worry about it. It's not no, as strong as it no, was earlier. I'm, I'm afraid, again, as I said at the outset, that some of those winds, onshore winds out there east of the center are going to be very devastating. At this point, do you think we're about at the time of highest storm surge? Uh, should be, just for the next hour or two as it comes onshore, where we have the onshore winds. Mm -hmm. and this is outlined here. So we're really, really from Mobile Bay all the way down well, to about Tampa, Florida, Tampa, we have it Florida. outlined. Well, the tide is going to be high in Appalachia Bay anyway because of the onshore winds there, and that area is very susceptible to high tides. But the highest tides will be near where the center comes ashore and on about 40 miles or so east of there. In other words, the Pensacola over toward the Panama City. The fact that we're coming in uh, with this hurricane at a time of low tide will help a little bit. That helps a little bit. Indeed it does because it's coming in just about exactly at low tide. All righty. Now here, let's take a little bit wider view because once this hurricane comes inland, uh, of course, the next few hours will be critical right near the coast. But after that, it's going to keep right on rolling to the northeast. And the fact that it's moving so fast to the northeast, Jill, is going to bring uh, strong, gusty winds uh, pretty far inland. Uh, a fast-moving hurricane brings the winds farther inland, a lot farther inland than one uh, slow moving. Normally in the Gulf of Mexico, uh, hurricanes don't move this fast. This is a fast movement, but perhaps not for October. We don't have many October hurricanes in the Gulf. Uh, we've ha in the past, we've had them, but in recent years, we haven't seen very many. Alrighty. Now, one other thing we should point out, now that it's made landfall, we're getting to about that point where we're more likely to see tornadoes. We are, because we don't normally see tornadoes uh, before the eye comes ashore. And once that eye comes ashore, and especially in the right front semicircle, which would be the eastern semicircle of the hurricane, we're more likely to get them there than we are anywhere else. And not really very close to the eye. A lot of these tornadoes can occur 100 miles or more from the eye of the hurricane. Alrighty. Well, again, Hurricane Opal has now made landfall right around Pensacola. We've had reports of wind gusts to 144 miles per hour. We'll continue to see heavy rain and possibly tornadoes for some time to come. Now with the forecast, we're going to take it back to the studio. Okay, thank you, Jill. We will have that forecast with Terry in just a second. This is the latest radar around the nation. Of course, you can see Opal, as John is pointing out, just making landfall now south of Pensacola. And along our stationary front, just ahead of it, quite a bit of rain. Some of the rain is torrential, especially in Alabama, northwest Florida. Opal attacks the Florida Gulf Coast. Fortunately, though, no Camille. It was earlier a Category 4 hurricane, very dangerous storm. Now just a Category 3, but we're still looking at extensive damage and serious coastal flooding. Thanks for joining us here in the Forecast Center from Atlanta. I'm Mike Seidel, along with our tropical specialist, John Hope. And John, earlier today, we thought we had a Camille. We thought it was going to be total devastation. Fortunately, the storm has weakened as it made landfall. Well, it weakened. Uh, it began to weaken uh, really by noon today. It was the strongest about 5 o'clock in the morning, and that's when the winds were 150 miles an hour. 
an hour. But right after that, it began to weaken some. We had this very small eye. The eye was only five miles in diameter, and that's really an unstable uh, situation in the atmosphere. It can't sustain itself with an eye that small. And so what you usually have is some sort of a cycle where that inner eye will disappear, the uh, eye will spread out, you'll have a larger eye, and then it goes back many times to the smaller eye. But this time, before that could happen, the storm made landfall. Fortunately, and our Fortunately. very own Bill Keneally has been in the thick of it along the Gulf Coast. Fortunately, he's in Pensacola. The worst has been east of Pensacola. Bill, it looks like uh, it's almost a, a pretty decent evening now there in Pensacola. Mike, it looks like our clouds are now moving from northeast back to southwest, but we are seeing some breaks. You can almost envision some blue higher up there, so I think definitely the worst is over, and our surface wind is definitely now from the northwest, so I think we're implying a drier wind direction. Okay, we're here with Dale Holmes. He is a, a seasoned veteran of hurricanes. Dale, how'd this one stack up? Well, it wasn't near as bad as we thought it would be. Okay, and you've been here how long? 22 years I was born here. So. 22 years, so you've been through, I would guess, Hurricane Elena and also a very powerful hurricane back in 1979, Hurricane Frederick. Do you remember that one? Yeah, I do. I was real little. I remember siphoning gas out of the car to put in the Coleman stove. <laughs> Maybe the day afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> okay, again, Dale, uh, we continue to see things improving. Now, I guess you guys are about ready to pack up and head home. How far away are you from here? We live about a mile and a half. A mile and yeah, a half. Just, just north of here. Okay, well, you take it easy and watch out for the down power lines. Looks like things are probably in better shape. Again, we're talking with Dale Holmes here at the Lipscomb Elementary School, and we are north of Pensacola, not far, maybe a few miles north, and we're about 12 miles due north of the actual Gulf Front. Mike? Uh, Bill, have you talked with any emergency management officials concerning uh, reports of damage coming in from the areas along the coast east of the uh, eye wall of Hurricane Opal? Do you have any reports of uh, what's happened so far? No, Mike, we have not. I've only talked to the Scambia County folks, and once again, the information they have is barely trickling in from the Barrier Island, which takes in the areas from Gulf Breeze on across into Pensacola Beach itself. But I suspect, as John Hope mentioned, over by Hurlburt, we had winds as high as 144 miles per hour. That news cannot be good. And, Bill, we have uh, winds reported 115 miles an hour at the Eglin Air Force Base in Valparaiso. But where you are there, we're definitely getting a northwest wind now, and the pressure is rising. So that means things are getting better. Right, John. I suspect that the folks over there by Eglin Air Force Base, as well as Herber Hurlburt Field, they were probably actually in the actual eye wall, and I suspect that we missed it by a few miles as it passed to our east. Okay, Bill Keneally, hunker down there. It looks like you're uh, out of the worst of it. We'll be checking back with you live from Pensacola. That's Bill Keneally and our Weather Channel team on the Gulf Coast of Florida. Now back here in the forecast center, joined by our tropical specialist, John Hope. And John, let's take a close look now at the radar because we can see the eye wall and we've had reports of twisters as uh, the eye wall now is moving north, northeast into extreme southern and south central Alabama. Well, <clears throat> that's what we're afraid of, that there will be twisters. This typically happens once the eye comes ashore. We don't normally see that until the eye does come ashore. So we would wouldn't be surprised, but we see the uh, rain really ending along a large section now of the Gulf Coast, all the way from Mobile to almost to, uh, well, just about to Panama City, actually. Still very heavy rain spreading up into Alabama, and that's going to be spreading up in to uh, south uh, eastern Alabama and into the western part of Georgia as this storm moves on to the north. Still at a good clip. It's moving about 20, over 20 miles an hour. And we want to remind uh, the folks that because of the circulation, the, uh, the winds are blowing offshore around Mobile Bay, so they probably had no real problems as far as tidal surge. No, I don't think they did. They wouldn't have any problem with tidal surge where they have offshore winds. You'll also uh, note, Mike, on the radar that there uh, doesn't seem to be very heavy precipitation to the south of the eye at all. And checking some of the uh, observations, rainfall total so far about five to six inches in Milton and around Mobile and Pensacola seems to be the uh, rainfall. Here's our latest advisory in. Opal still a category three hurricane, so it's stronger than Aaron. And I would assume, you can correct me on this, the strongest hurricane to make landfall on the Gulf Coast since Camille? Well, no, I, it probably wasn't very much stronger uh, than uh, Eloise of 1975 or Frederick of 79. It was, had, was much stronger earlier this morning, but by the time it made the landfall, it was not. And it's still clocking along north-northeast at 22 miles an hour. And what is the aspect, the fact that it's moving so fast? Is this going to cut down on the damage, the rainfall, the storm surge? Well, that won't uh, affect the storm surge very much. The storm surge should have uh, kind of peaked out by now, although it'll take several hours for it to recede. The main, uh, the main thing is with this uh, fast movement toward the north that the uh, 
hurricane force winds will extend inland a little farther than we normally see. But I don't think, uh, since it wasn't as strong when it came ashore as Hugo was, you know, in Hugo, we had hurricane force winds all the way from Charleston, South Carolina, on, uh, on up to Charlotte, North Carolina. This time, I don't think you'll have hurricane force winds extending beyond uh, southeastern Alabama and southwestern Georgia. And once again, those heavy rains now moving up to Birmingham, Atlanta tonight, eventually Charlotte, Asheville, in through the Ohio Valley. Saffir Simpson scale tells us that the hurricane now is a Category 3, not a Category 4. And if you want to describe the damage, John, not extreme, but extensive. Well, we would expect extensive damage. But again, uh, I don't think there was very much damage in Pensacola because it turned out that the eye went just to the east of them. And the uh, strong winds didn't extend very far to the west at all, especially this afternoon. But we did notice that uh, strong winds extended well out east of the hurricane, out about 100 miles or so. And the storm surge uh, still indicated to be uh, as high as 10 to 15 feet in some of these areas. Uh, again, uh, fortunately, around Pensacola and areas to the east, hitting at low tide, the hurricane making long landfall at low tide, which shaves a couple feet off the high water mark. That helps some. So any significant storm surge would be east of Pensacola. Uh, and the rainfalls will continue, and the high tides, there they are, Apalachicola coming up a little later on this evening at 916. Pensacola, your high tide has occurred, so, or rather, your low tide has occurred, so the tide's going to start coming in. But fortunately, now you have an offshore wind from the north and northwest. And once again, it's making landfall, and we have to worry about rain bands north of the center. And over in the Florida Peninsula, you see those bright colors. And because of that, the Severe Storms Forecast Center has issued a, another tornado watch. Both of these watches are in effect until midnight central and 1 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. We'll be following that. That is probably going to be the big story, uh, the possible tornadoes and the rainfall all the way up through the Ohio Valley and New England between now and the weekend. A lot of rain extending well up to the north before all is said and done. And we'll have more live coverage. Bill Keneally on the beach or near the beach in Pensacola, Florida. Now check on your weekend forecast. Here's Janetta Jones. Yeah, we are going to talk about what you can expect tomorrow and want to remind you the tropical storm and hurricane forecast positions provided by the National Hurricane Center in Miami, Florida. And by tomorrow morning, rush hour traffic could be very, very treacherous in Atlanta. We could be looking at some roads closed and some creeks up above their banks because of all the flooding rains, not to mention the tropical storm force winds that are expected, gusting up to 50, maybe even 60 miles per hour. It's still going to be at a tropical storm status is what we're thinking right now and upon you in Alabama. Tennessee and Georgia. All of this rain will be rushing on northward through the Appalachians into the northeast and at the same time we're going to be dealing with this next frontal boundary that will be providing you with snow and wind and rain in the plains. But the big story will be the rains in the northeast. Look how quickly that storm system is moving and that's actually good news because then no one will see torrential rains for long periods of time. But